Hey everyone, welcome to our new class. Um, today we're going to be talking about vegetable system. We talked about grass system last class and now we're here in, in a, a plot that's designed for vegetable production. As you can see here we've got a newly uh, planted bed or two actually. There's another one back here. You probably can't see it right now but you will be able to see it later. Um, so all right, first let's go through the, the history of this place. Gennaro, once again tell us what happened here. Um, what is this that's planted? Well, what's the distance between the tree rows? Which species right. have we got? Um, okay, uh, well basically, yeah. So in this agroforestry system, we, we follow on from the grass system that we had just above there, where we have the same six meters between one tree bed to the next great and we have the three beds here this time it's a vegetable bed okay right we've we've planted vegetable here this is the third time around we've had to prune to let the sun in and to keep on planting veg you know so this is this is key we can keep on planting veg as long as we're pruning we're being radical with the pruning to let the sun in uh, we're delaying the trees but uh you know they're patient they can wait a little bit you know, there will be a point where I'll have to make a decision whether I'll allow these trees to come now and then, you know, I'll have to start working with veg that accept shadows, a little bit of shade or, or move into the grass systems here, right? Uh, here we've done a, a, a simple consortium. You know, we really like the idea of companion planting. This is, this is like the fundamental, isn't it? So in this case, we've got the basil. We've got a line of basil. Uh, we've got the lettuce between okras the? okras very interesting i haven't yet seen okras in in london and in europe and that but i'm sure there is in them fancy restaurants here in brazil we, we like it a lot uh behind us we have a system where we have aubergine you know eggplant and we have leek and look how interesting here we're using elephant grass with our veg system so as you can see we've opened a little window here uh, we've actually gone ahead and cut the grass to feed the vegetable bed. Um, you know, there's so much benefit in this in this practice. You know, as we're feeding it, we're stopping uh, next weeds from coming in and, and competing. Uh, we're, we're feeding it. We're, we're giving it shade to the soil. We've got to have a module talking about uh, you know covering the soil. So this is. A real practical way of covering the soil. We're sending all sorts of information. Felipe will talk about this. The kind of information that this grass is giving to the vegetable bed. Yeah, that's pretty great. Um, so if you're wondering, right, so but why plant trees if I just want to harvest vegetable? You know, it's just an extra work for me. I'm going to have to keep pruning them forever. And when I just want to have vegetables. Well, it turns out that trees are highly beneficial to vegetables it comes back to that idea of the clearing in the forest okay um, when you when you have trees in your system you have a live root system underneath the soil and that's what you want all the time because what keeps the soil alive are the microorganisms and they depend on plants to feed them and plants depend on them to feed themselves back so it's a, a very um, long dated symbiosis that happens between microorganisms and trees and this benefits all the other plants because many of these uh, vegetables they are very very sensitive plants and they they demand a very very rich nutrient soil and also a very rich soil in, reg in regards to, to biology so we need um, we need microorganisms and that's what plants are doing and every time you prune them they're going to release food to the microorganisms they, they, they're going to pump the soil and not only the, the roots but also all the organic matter that we, we, we bring down um, you can see that everything is pruned so um, Coming back to the trees, tell us a bit, a bit about the, the, the species we have here in the tree rows. Yeah, uh, we have here as a main crop the avocado. 
So I would really like the legacy to be avocado, you know, we really want to move into like avocado oils and all sorts of interesting products that we, we, we're looking forward to. Uh, the avocados, however, they might take uh, four or five years. You know, we've planted them from seed and we're having excellent results here. This is really one of the best terrains in Brazil for avocados. So you will be seeing them pop up everywhere. However, in the shorter term, we've seen a lot of moringas. The moringas have shot up, they've come up straight, you know, we're selling it at the market. You know, the moringa has got high protein, we, we, we're feeding the cows, right? And the stimulation the moringa is giving, you know, that growth stimulation, because as it's growing, everything is trying to play catch up with them. Yeah, it's really amazing because we have moringa trees here that are probably five meters tall. You're going to see them. Um, and it's been one year. Right? It's been one year. This was planted uh, a year ago. We have the eucalyptus. We use the eucalyptus a lot for, for pruning and uh, giving back to the soil and the bananas. I've actually open, open hand, I mean, what I'm saying is, I've actually, I've opted not to harvest banana fruit here and trim it and feed the soil before I've even harvested the fruit. Yeah, uh, it's, it's giving me so much benefit, you know, all that water, we've just come through the drought, we're at the end of the drought, you know, chopping up the banana and feeding the soil has been so beneficial that really, economically, it's paid more, you know. The banana, the you know, the benefits it's had with the veg, it's paid itself, you know, it's paid for, for all that. And then, you know, it's got to come back and we, we've got to harvest it next time around. Yeah. yeah, there's no doubt that if you're going to plant vegetables, if, you, if your, your region allows banana due to climate, you must plant bananas. There is absolutely no doubt it's the best organic matter you have for vegetables, okay? Um, we use the banana trunk is the best product you have for covering the soil so you really need a very high density of banana plants in your vegetable garden in order to cut them down and cover the soil that's one of the one of the biggest findings that that we've had and um, it's, it's really worth it there's there's no question to that it's been proven over and over in various places yeah. um, the, the bananas I mean we, we we have the tradition of planting it every three meters you know but now, you know, we, we want to do experiments. We were planting at every meter, you know, just exactly. so we so we can have every three meters to harvest, maybe, and the ones in between to to, to cut down, to and, cut feed down and, and feed the system. Yeah. Here, uh, I've worked with prunings of trees. We've got a system here where we prune the tree. We actually shred this wood. We take it to the barns. You know, it's sat there with the horses. It's enriched. You can imagine, right? And then we bring it back to cover the soil. So this material is like, it's the ultimate man. I've tried yeah. it, I've tried the, the trimming without it going to, through the barns. I've tried the horse manure without mixing it with trimmings. I just found it really balanced, you know, the, the trimmed wood with the horse manure as a material to cover, you know, since I, I, I breed horses. So it's just, it's just a circle, you know, it really makes good sense for me. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Um, Okay, so this you can see this of uh, one companion planting. Okay, we've got here one, two, three species here, and in the other um, bed we've got two species. Um, this is a simple consortium. Okay, it's it's very very simplified. Uh, we can go up to even seven species. Okay, and the way you're gonna do uh, the way to 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 build the consortium is basically just thinking about. Um, the, the life cycle of plants, right? One is harvested earlier, another is harvested later. We're going to cover this in more detail when we're actually in the in the in the in the practice, right? In, in the last module, yeah, we're going to talk. We're going to we're going to we're going to make different um, consortiums. Um, so maybe three, four, five different types. Some more dense, some less dense. We're going to go through that. So. Yeah, I think to summarize, basically the vegetable system consists of tree rows which are mainly there to produce organic matter to the vegetable beds to keep that soil alive, feeding microorganisms, to have a byproduct which is fruit every now and then and wood and wood for the future and if you so decide in five, six, seven, ten years' time, 
but if you're tired of growing vegetables, you've got a nice row of banana trees and avocados to harvest and you can stop pruning them, stop putting them down. Bring in the grass. Bring in the grass and keep in uh, harvest avocados. Bring in the cows, the horses. And harvest avocados. And harvest avocados and let them, you know, yeah. let the cows and, and the horses eat whatever falls on the exactly. ground. Exactly. And, and you, you, you know, just stop eating lettuce and start eating guacamole. You know, you might be asking yourself, how come we, we've densed this? You know, we really plant in each crop in the same density as you would in the monoculture. Uh, but there's just different heights, different timings of harvesting and... Exactly. That's the, the, the basic principle of, of making companion planting is, is, is distributing plants uh, by, by the, the, the strata they occupy and the, the life cycle that they have so that one doesn't really bother the other. But if you do it intelligently, you can harvest. And this is, a, this is from a study I know because uh, uh, it is a study that I did. Um, you can harvest as much as 2.7 times more just by making a, uh, a companion, companion plant. Plan. Yeah. Okay. So, so you know, in, in one hectare of companion planting, the way we do it in agroforestry, if you would have, if you if you wanted to have the same amount of produce, but in monoculture, so instead of one hectare, now you need 2.7. Mm -hmm. And and that doesn't mean only mean more area it means more water it means more manure oh yeah it means a lot more it means a lot more everything oh yeah because here we have one bed we've we exactly we've brought the manure in once we've irrigated it once but we, we're tripling the the crops exactly uh, and also you got some guarantees you know we work with organic you know it can happen where, where with all this organic matter it's very difficult for for bugs to come in and and really bother the plants they'll come in and they'll trim the the, the matter that's on the soil uh, primarily but you know we've got some guarantees say it comes in and eats my lettuce don't don't matter because I guarantee that the next crop is gonna pay for that exactly so you know we cover ourselves we, we can afford we can afford mistakes yeah, you can and afford to lose one we can afford to lose one because you've and got the other with the companion planning don't expect to get it right the first time round. you really have to understand the timing and the spacing of each of them yeah so you can expect to you know it's a learning curve, you know, and then, you know, this consortium has worked for me before, so I'm going to use it again. Uh, but we will be showing you a few of the basic ones and, and you know, you guys got to work it out, don't worry. Exactly. And um, one thing that I always find interesting also to, to have in vegetable beds, we don't really have it here, but I always like to put in at least one species that has a longer cycle, up to one year. Cassava, yams taro um, actually um, depending on on the case okra would uh, sometimes it lasts longer probably not in this density but it, it could um, yeah, the reason for this is that doing vegetables over vegetables over vegetables uh, uh, short cycle vegetables I mean up to three months if you're just doing them over and over and over in the same place um, it really demands a, a, a massive input of organic matter and a massive input manpower. Of, of manpower and massive input of, of you know messing a bit with the soil massive input of manure so if you have cassava or, or yams or taro or, or, or um, you know I love the sweet turmeric um, or, or ginger or whatever you can put them in the system and, and they're gonna they're gonna be harvested after your short cycle vegetables so it's it's and, and they're a lot less demanding so it's going to be like um almost like like fallow you know it's going to be fallow for, for for the for the place it's going to rest from vegetables so that's a very interesting mm -hmm. practice mm -hmm. I, I love i love the sweet potatoes and the taros you know i always I, I like to have a root you know to have that that information that working in the soil you know that that kind of uh potatoes and things like that something that's going to be working underneath as well bringing all that fungus underneath and all that life under the soil i love that as well exactly and the sweet sure. potato the way it spreads and it gives that cover it, you know it gives it the shade and you know the next crop coming up and occupying that that next height so you know so it's really a, we're going to be showing a few a few different options for that for sure yeah so i think that's it um so that's the 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 very basics uh, mind you, this this design, this um, the amount of beds 
in between the tree rows, the distance between the tree rows, this is all variable. It's like you said, it's what Janao chose for this place. Well, we might as well do it for the tree rows four meters apart and only two beds. It really depends. I have examples. Um, I have examples in next areas where, where it's like that. We have uh, every four meters the trees. And that, that means we only, it only fits two beds of vegetable, right? So well, what's the relation? Here we've got three, so it means it's more spaced, it means more light. It means we can use it for veg for longer. So if you have your trees spaced out longer, it means you have more light, you have light coming in for a longer time, you can make veg more often. Yeah, without, that, without pruning. Without pruning. Without pruning. And if you want more forest and less veg, you know, you do your two, your two beds of veg, you know, once, twice, and then that's it. And then if you, you know, if you've got the, the trees closer by, it's going to close up and you're going to have to move on. You're going to have to move on with crops and then you come in with coffee and cacao. Next, next crops in the middle that you can come in, that's going to support the, uh, it's going to live happily in the shadow, you know, uh, in the lower stratifications from the trees. Yeah. So All that's right. pretty much it. Um, let's wrap it up now. From the Thank Avril you for Forestry. watching. Yeah, from Academy the Agriculture Crew. Academy. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope we have made ourselves clear about the vegetable system. Let's talk um, about it in the webinar. Let's talk about it in the webinar. Ooh. Thank you all for watching, and till next time. Cheers. Godspeed. Brown. <laughs>